So my name is Christine O'Sullivan and I work for Silso Spray Applications Unit and we're involved in the AMBER project in terms of supporting the spray application onto plants, various protected crops. So the key message I want to put across today is the importance of tank washing. If you have any residue from the previous product, you're going to contaminate the uh, product you're putting in, the biopesticide. And in doing that, you're actually uh, reducing its efficacy, so you're killing some of the bacteria that are in, within that liquid. Um, so the really important thing is to look at your methods for washing the tank, make sure you've really got it clean, use dyes and other sort of materials to try and check, as we've done here, just to try and uh, bottom when you've actually cleaned things out. And don't be afraid to dismantle your components, take your nozzles out, soak them just to make sure you actually have got all that residue out. But another alternative approach, which is probably an easy approach and takes less time, is to use a second tank, a second tank that's dedicated to the biopesticides. So the key message in terms of mixing your product, your biopesticide, is to make sure that you've got a uniform mixture with your spores released from the carrier that they arrive in, particularly with granular materials. So we have some examples here where we've uh, mixed in the lab using two types of water, uh, deionized water and tap water, and our tap water is particularly hard. And we found that the ones that were mixed with the deionized water formed a nice uniform mix, the solubility was better, and you had no particulates mixing around in the, in the mixture. So you, when you put that through your nozzles, you're not going to have a problem with blockages. So really important when you're actually spraying the product to keep it agitated within your tank. So whatever method you use, you need to keep that going all the way through your full application.